What's up nail geeks and welcome to another polish pickup video. It is that time again. I feel like it was literally a week ago that the grunge theme was on. Um, it's, it's definitely, it, it feels like it's just such a short turnaround of time, but I mean, it's been a month. So here we are. Um, I am recording in a different spot this time. I have absolutely loathed my lighting situation. I can't seem to get a ring light or any other of my studio lights to work and not make me look washed out or have the shadows casting. I haven't figured that out yet. It's a whole other ballpark because I'm so used to having a window to record in front of. Um, so am I in a very obscure location in my place? Yes. Am I behind a couch? Yes. Does it look weird if somebody walked into my apartment right now? You bet. It's going to be so weird. <laughs> so uh, thankfully, um, I'm alone in here. Thankfully, baby's asleep. And I don't think anyone's going to be peeking at me like, what are you doing? Anyways, so I'm hoping when I go to edit that the, the window is nice and the lighting is much better. On my viewer, it looks better, but we'll we'll see what it looks like on the computer screen. Anyways, I'm going to try to stay on topic. I swear. I just I know I tend to yak a lot on the polish pickup videos. All right, so you guys know exactly what time it is. It is shaming time. I get to shame, shame, shame last month's winners. Um, I don't know what happened. Uh, September's winners were completely on a roll with uh, getting to me. And then I had nobody to, uh, to shame last month. So this month, it's almost like everyone was like, okay, we, we want you to not have to play the horns of shame on yourself. So whatever. I have eight of you to shame. Shame, shame, shame. If you are on this list, please email me and I can get you your code. Uh, if you're not on this list and you wanna win a code, please enter the giveaway. All you have to do on this video is comment anything. Tell me hi, tell me what's on your wish list. Um, tell me that you are just, overwhelmed with all the beautiful things releasing this month, all that good stuff. And I will pick 10 of you through a random, I use a comment picker through the comment section and I pick 10 of you to each of you will win a $10 PPU gift code to the shop. So kind of helps you out a little bit there. And it's super exciting. Um, looking at my calendar right now, since I am not in my normal spot, um, we're going to have the giveaway going until Halloween. That's exciting. So Halloween, October 31st, that's a Tuesday. I'm going to announce winners through a pinned comment at 4 p.m. Central Time. In the event that I do, or rather my son has a baseball game, which is usually around that time, I will do a pinned comment to let you guys know, hey, I'm bumping it to, say, um, 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. Central Time that night. I will let you guys know. But as of right now, I want to keep it my normal 4 p.m. Central Time giveaway and I will reply to your comments and I will also do my pinned comment. Um, before we get to the shaming part, please, please, please note that I will never ask you for anything. If someone is, or rather the bots are starting or striking again, um, I don't know what a telegram is. I don't like, or rather in today's time, I don't know what that means. If you're actually a winner on the time that I announce, um, the only thing I have is that you email me and then that's it. And then I interact with you and I give you your code. That's it. So do not, do not respond to them. Don't give them any information, whatever. Report. I try to report. I try to monitor the Polish Picket video comments as much as I can. And as soon as I see them, I'm reporting and blocking and reporting it to YouTube as well. So um, help me out in that regard. I will never ask anything of you. So anyways, back to the shaming. Um, we've got eight. Um, let's see. First one is plead the fifth. Second is Tiffany Gray with four. The third one is Morgan Varela, 2822. Next one is Francesca Tazzi. I think I'm saying that right, 2336. Um, Sue's Cute Butt, 6173. I think you've won one before. That's interesting. I swear I, I remember Cute Butt for sure. Um, anyways, email me. Um, Mary Kate Finney, 3914. Melissa 4168 and finally frequent breaks. Please email me so I can get you guys your code and maybe help you out with this month and all that good stuff. And remember, shame, 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 shame on all of you. And yeah, so remember, 
Halloween, 4 p.m. Central, unless I say otherwise and there's a baseball game. But we have the theme fairy tales and folklore. I had to double check that, the actual theme of it, because we have had some fantasy-like themes in the past. Not that I'm mad about it, so I wanted to make sure I got that correct. My personal favorite themes for Polish Pickup are always the foodie themes. Um, anything like we have, I'm, we've had um, a sweets and I know we've had junk food. Those types of themes are always my favorite. And then the really fantasy, um, you know, fairy tales, those kinds of themes are always, oh, they're just so nice. I just feel like the, the inspirations are really cool. I've gotten to read a, a couple of really interesting fairy tales that are like other uh, parts of the world type renditions because of this. And it was just, it's just really cool. And I, I really enjoyed this theme. So this month is very dangerous for our wallets again, and I'm so in love. I have quite a bit of a haul to show you guys this month. And um, I know I said a couple months ago that I wasn't going to do like super big PPU videos a whole lot anymore, but here we are. So <laughs> uh, it is what it is. So let's dive right in and check out the polishes. And first up, we've got Baroness X. This is Deadly Waters, described as a purplish wine base fluid art polish with blue to green to purple shifting shimmer. This one's inspired by Sirens of the Dark Waters. Price is 13 and there is no cap. So I'm going to start off showing you guys what it looks like if you choose to not use it as fluid art polish. You can absolutely wear this by itself and not do anything special with it. If you wear it solo, I would suggest going up to three coats and it's very jelly. It builds up very pretty and it's got that true grape base with that lovely contrast of blue shimmer. And then here we're going to go in real quick, super sped up. Um, this is my newest method in making fluid art decals. I think I've kind of cracked the code a little bit. Um, you just want to make a big old mess on a silicon mat like this of some type. I think you could also use parchment paper if you were in a pinch. Just let it gently guide itself throughout the mat. Not mush it a whole lot. If you mush it too much, you're going to get a muddy look You and you want the colors to kind of melt together. I let my decal dry down for two days because I was busy swatching and life and all that. You'll want to rehydrate it with a clear top coat. I'm using Baroness X's Hydromancy top coat, which is really good for this. It basically rehydrates it and it gets it nice and pliable again. I did apply the top coat and then it got really hard again because um, life but I was still able to get it to stick to my nail by using a base coat and then letting it get tacky and then sticking it on. Finish with a glossy top coat and you've got some really cool fluid art nails. And next is Beau Rev. This is a Mermaid Has No Tears. Described as a vibrant blue to green shifting base with iridescent and multi-chrome color shifting flakes and hollow sparkle. This one's inspired by Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Mermaid. Price is 12 and there is no cap. This has a lush, beautiful formula, and if I had to describe it, I would say that it truly is a mermaid in a bottle. This has a great opacity to it. So I think two coats across the board is just wonderful. You're really not gonna need that third coat, even if you have super long nails, because it is such a rich, viscous type of formula that is so very satisfying. It has a strong aqua glow to it, and it has an easy shift over to blue at angles, like you're seeing here on my macro shot. Now it does dry down quite flat, so I would suggest a plumping glossy top coat. And next up is Cameo Colors. This is Fairy Fantasy, described as a cerulean base with a hint of scattered hollow sparkle, full of pink, red, copper, green shifting shimmer, rainbow micro flakes, and silver hollow micro flakes. Quite a mouthful. This is uh, inspired by an ethereal and whimsical fairy world, Price is 12 and there is a cap of 105. So per usual, we have a perfect formula for Cameo. I did have them on my PPU series, um, I think before I had my little one, but um, very much expected to have a perfect Crelly formula. I think two to three coats is the best. I personally chose to take it to a third coat because I do have quite a bit of a free edge from my falsies here. Now it does dry down quite flat again because it's so packed full of shimmer. So I would suggest a plumping glossy top coat to finish off. And here is Chameleon Nails. This is Spring in Rivendell. Described as a navy when cold to plum magenta when warm to bright green when very warm thermal with golden green iridescent flakes and silver hollow glitters in various sizes. This one's inspired by the Lord of the Rings. Price is $13.50 and there is a cap of $260. So we have another Crelly formula and this has this ultra smooth cream like effect 
effect to it as you're going in on your brush strokes. I didn't really have a need for the careful placement as I got perfect glitter coverage from the brush, but I would suggest maybe going in with that icing method on the second coat like I did because the glitters are of the heavier size. Now going in with the ice water shot here, you can see it's very reactive. I will note that I run very cold in the mornings when I'm swatching. So I did have to use a touch of warm water, really warm water to get that green to pop. Otherwise, once I got it to kind of, I guess, activate, if you will, it transitioned so well on the thermal properties and was so so reactive. This time of year is perfect for thermals because you'll get different temperatures inside and outside. Now it does have a touch of thirstiness and texture from the glitters. So I would suggest a glitter smoothing top coat, just a thin coat in addition to your glossy. And next we've got DRK Nails. This is Watch Out. Described as a mix of two different 5D magnetic pigments, large particle size Aurora Sapphire to Violet Shimmer and Red Glitter Flakes. This one's inspired by Little Red Riding Hood walking in the woods. I saw the picture for that and it is a perfect rendition of that. This is 1350 and is capped at 400. Um, I did talk to Katya about this. Um, the formula is very thick. I personally did not have any issues with that. I liked it. I typically prefer, honestly, thicker polishes. The more op opaque to me, the better. But she did say she's going to work out that formula and it's going to be just a touch more smooth on customer bottles. Two Coats is just packed full of magnetic pigment. So I really didn't see a need to kind of, you know, lop on the magnetic pigment there. So Two Coats, DRK's Magic Magnetic Top Coat and a Glossy Top Coat. And it was perfectly reactive. And next we've got Hearts and Promises. This is Once Upon a Starry Night, described as a black scattered hollow base with aqua sparkles and blue shimmer. This one's inspired by A Starry Night, price is 13, and there's a cap of 300 on it. This has such a smoky, dusky sort of appearance as you build it up, and I really appreciated it. Now, I want to note that I had coverage right there at that second coat, but at, like just at the angle that I was painting at, I could kind of see through the falsy a little bit, so I chose to take it up to three coats. So this will depend on the length of your free edge and how you polish, whether or not you're gonna wear it at two to three. Otherwise, it's very opaque regardless and it builds up really nice and I think it just matches up with its inspiration perfectly. This also dries down very flat, so you'll definitely wanna use a good glossy top coat. And here is Jen and Berries. This is off the hookah, described as a Prussian blue small particle linear holographic base with a subtle silver to aqua shifting shimmer, gunmetal microflakes, and holographic flakes. This one's inspired by the Caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland. Price is 13 and there is a cap of 250. So this is jelly-like in how it applies, but it is so very opaque in how it builds up. I'm gonna suggest two to three coats here and it's so sparkly and twinkly in person. Indoor lighting and like your kitchen lights and stuff, you will see, st you'll still see like a bit of a sparkle effect. And of course, in the sunshine or brighter lights, those um, awesome bathroom lights in the public, you'll see more of a sparkle. But overall, it's it's really pretty. It's dainty, but also in a very rich, opaque, almost cream appearance looking way. It does dry down semi flat. So I think any top coat's perfect. And next is KB Shimmer. This is bound to happen. Described as a navy base with accent shades in violet, pink, and golden green. When magnetized, the base becomes deep blue with a deep indigo to royal to blue to teal magnetic pole with fuchsia pink, gold, and green at the most extreme angles. This one's inspired by fantasy books. Price is 12 and there is no cap. This is beautiful and it's one of those intense, loud, obnoxious types of contrasting magnetic looks and i mean that in the best way this is kind of like this is what i'm talking about when i say i like magnetic polishes it's there's just such a contrast between the base and the magnetic pigment it does have a lot of movement as you can see there with the finger wiggle and with my full hand shot here it's very intense and the particles were so quick to snap to with the magnet that i think this is very user friendly as well so lots of shift lots of pull now it does dry down really really flat so you'll want to use a plumping glossy top coat and next we've got luna lacquer this is ember wing described as a blue reflective glitter base with orange to gold shimmer on a smoky background 
This is inspired by the Phoenix as it rises from the ashes on a starry night. Price is 12 and there's a cap of 150. We have a very heavy formula here and it built up really nice for me between two to three coats. So this is going to play up as um, how long your nails are and how you polish. Now remember, reflective glitter polish tends to have quite a bit of thirstiness and texture, which this one does have. So I use a glitter smoothing top coat in addition to my glossy top coat. And you can see how glowy, but it's just like a vampy sort of glow. At angles, you'll see this nice golden sort of cast from the shimmer. And next we've got Monarch. This is Let Your Power Shine. This is described as a sparkly, punchy pink with fuchsia hollow micro glitter and pink, orange, green micro flakes. This is inspired by a lyric from the healing incantation verse sung by Rapunzel in the movie Tangled. This one's 13 with no cap. This is jelly-like. It starts off on the lighter side, but it's got this beautiful squishiness to it that I think just helps to make everything nice and level and even. So I hardly had really any like super texture, even though there's micro glitter here. So I was really impressed with that. It's very sparkly. And this is one of those polishes that you really need to see it on a video. I just don't think swatches are going to do this one justice. The shimmer kind of takes a bit of a backdrop, but it's like a, a little like peekaboo thing with a golden shift in indoor lighting. So in the sunshine, you'll see lots of sparkles and indoors, you'll see the shimmer pop out. I did use a plumping glossy top coat to seal this one off, but honestly, I didn't really see a need for the glitter smoother. And next is MTK Designs. This is a bright magenta pink jelly swimming with pink to gold shimmers, a splash of gold to copper to pink flakies and spritz with electric blue to purple sparkles. This one's inspired by unicorns being freed from the sea at the end of the last unicorn. Price is 13 and there is no cap. So if you're thinking, oh, this is kind of similar to Monarch, I will have a comparison here in just a moment. Now, MTK has a true jelly-like formula, depending on whether you wear it at two to three coats is going to depend on whether or not that uh, pinky sort of look gets more intense. I personally chose to do three coats and you can see it's on the lighter side. So um, spoiler alert, it might have topper capabilities, but if a free edge bothers you, you'll probably want to use a color correcting base coat of some type. Now comparing the two, I went in, this is the first coat between them, the second coat between them. You can see how they're building up differently. MTK has more of a purple base and Monarch. I do apologize about this smooshy smidgy mess I made in between the swatch sticks. Um, I did not wait until they both dried down. Anyways, these are different enough. Monarchs has glitter and shimmer. MTK is shimmer and they're both jelly bases, but when they build up, they look very different in my opinion. So uh, take that with what you will. I hope that helps if you are on the fence for either or if you're going to get both. And next we've got Night Owl Lacquer. This is Bigfoot Believes in You. Described as a dark brown base with copper to gold to green shifting crystal chameleon flakes, aqua to green crystal flakes, and hollow flecks. This one's inspired by Bigfoot Folklore of Washington. Price is 13 and there is no cap. Can I just say I appreciate how Night Owl will always stick in a Bigfoot reference in these types of themes. And I love it. It's it's just the best thing ever. Now, uh, Bigfoot Believes in You has a jelly like formula. Easy build up. I think if you're rocking shorter nails like nubbins or even just shorter than what I've got on my falsies here, you might be able to get away with two coats. So it does have quite a bit of a heavier factor to it because of the flakes. Just go in gently on your coats. Don't overwork that brush and you'll be perfect. It does have a very flat dry down though. So I would suggest a good glossy top coat, a plumping variety. It's just mosaic goodness from those flakes. And next is Polish. This is Mad Woman, described as a neon clover green base packed with aqua to green to blue shifting Aurora pigment. This one's inspired by Mad Woman from Taylor Swift's Folklore album. Price is 14 and there is no cap. So this is lush and just glowy in person. It's an easy buildup because in my opinion, it's the shimmer that's giving you the opacity here. Honestly, I think two to three coats is all you need. Um, I was hesitant to go up to that third coat, but given the length of my free edge with the falsies, I chose to do that and I think it plumped it out perfectly. But if you are rocking natural nails or nubbins, you might be able to get away with two heavy coats. Now, because it's so packed full of shimmer, we've got another flat dry down here. So I would suggest a good glossy top coat. 
And next is Pampered Polishes. This is August, described as a concrete gray hollow curly base with black flakes, hollow silver flakes, and iridescent flakes. This one's inspired by Taylor Swift's Folklore album. Again, price is 13 and there is no cap. So true Crelly formula, it's very satisfying on those brush strokes and it builds up slow and steady to give you that nice plumping gel-like appearance. I think three coats is gonna flatter this one the best and really bring out that base color. This is a cool toned type of white. In person, you can see that there's little holographic little like spots throughout it. It's really cute. It's more of the um, speckled kind of subdued variety in terms of sparkle. You're mostly going to see those little black flakes going throughout it. And then I would suggest a good glossy top coat, though you don't need to worry about texture or anything as this does dry down pretty smooth. And next we've got Psych Minerals. This is a super shifty orange to pink to yellow to green multi-chrome with silver reflective glitter. This one's inspired by the Puka. Price is 13 and there is a cap of 150. I do apologize if I said that inspo wrong, just throwing it out there. Now we have another very heavy base. Uh, reflective glitters do give us thirstiness and texture, so just keep that in mind. You'll need to use a glitter smoothing top coat and a glossy top coat with this one. The coverage on this is ridiculous in the best way possible. I think two coats is going to be perfect for everyone as this is delightfully opaque. It's very, very shifty. Even in my full hand shot here, I don't normally get super shiftiness at that light angle and I had no issues getting both those color rolls, the dominant ones to show. And here we've got Rogue. This is Supernatural Roguery, described as a deep blackberry base with a sprinkling of magenta to orange flakes, a dash of hollow flakes, and an intense shimmer that shifts between a red to gold Aurora glow. This one's inspired by Morgan Le Fay. Price is 13 and there is no cap. So no surprise, Rogue has a delicious formula. I think two coats is just wonderful. I don't really see anyone needing to go past that unless you polish ridiculously thin, but this is gorgeous. And I know it's purple, which I'm always picky about, but this is a stunning purple. It's very glowy. Um, I didn't have any issues in terms of texture, even though it's packed full of flakes, but I would still suggest a good glossy top coat because it's so packed full of shimmer. It does have a harsh dry down. And next is Sassy Sauce. This is Take My Hand, Wreck My Plans. Described as a magnetic smoky indigo base with a golden pinky shimmer. When magnetized, it pulls a mysterious pink to purple cat eye and leaves behind a charcoal base with a fiery copper to red shimmer. This one's inspired by Taylor Swift's Folklore album, specifically the video Willow. Price is 13 and there's a cap of 500 bottles. So I think this is really uh, versatile and that you can wear it unmagnetized too. And I'm really glad I did. I used the uh, uh, magnetic top coat so you guys can see it. It's very pretty unmagnetized. Now, when you magnetize it, I think this is not quite one of the super stark ones, but I think it is noticeable enough that it gives you this really nice, pleasant, ghostly sort of movement when it's magnetized. Now, the magnetic particle to this is quite heavy. So I would suggest adding maybe another 10 seconds to your magnetizing step just to make sure you get all of it to move. And it does dry down quite flat. So I would suggest a good glossy top coat here too. And the payoff is just, it's just really um, ethereal. And next we've got Vapid. This is the Seven Ravens described as an opalescent magnetic polish with a blue to purple pastel base and a pinky gold magnetic flash. This one's inspired by the grim fairy tale of the seven ravens. I actually haven't heard this one, so I need to read that. Um, this one's 13 with a cap of 320. So speaking of ghostly magnetic finishes, we've got one right here. I think three coats is the best if you wear this unmagnetized or magnetized. Now, this is another one similar to the sassy in that I think it looked badass unmagnetized. It's beautiful. It's really glowy. And it's just got this strong pastel sort of appearance to it. Now, I want to note that I forgot to record the magnetizing part, but I did do the same thing that I did previously with the magic magnetic top coat. And you can see on my full hand shot, it magnetized, but it's a subtle magnetic effect, but it does just give it this like extra ghostly looking appearance. I would also suggest a good glossy top coat. And next we've got Wildflower Lacquer. This is Frog and Toad, described as an emerald green jelly base with a subtle green to blue to purple shifting shimmer. 
This is inspired by its namesake, price is $13.50, and there is no cap. Now, I want to note that our PR information does state that this were more than likely stain, so wear a good base coat. And I have to agree with that. On my falsies, I had a yellow stain from this. So definitely make sure you wear a, if, especially if you have porous nails, natural nails, or any type of artificial enhancement, you'll need to wear a base of some type. Anyways, Frog and Toad has a delicious jelly-like formula. This is going to be so perfect for the holidays. It built up really well for me at three coats. I would suggest that across the board for everyone. And it's got a very lovely, subtle, but appearing in more shaded lighting, this nice um, bluish sort of cast to the shift. And last but not least, we've got Zombie Claw Polish. This is Zombie Fairies, described as a light grape base filled with electric lavender green blue shifting shimmer, black flakies, and glow in the dark blue. This one's inspired by its namesake, price is $13.50, and there's a cap of 300 bottles. So this is a wonderful, creamy, smooth, crelly formula. It built well for me at two coats, but I chose to do three coats as I had the same like angle when I was painting my nails as the hearts and promises. And I could see just the tiniest bit through it. So I thought, okay, let me go up to that third coat. So I think two coats, normal coats is going to be perfect for most. It does dry down very flat and harsh because of all the shimmer. So I would suggest a good glossy top coat to smooth it out. Glow in the dark pigments typically make your polishes very harsh and how they dry down. So just throwing that out there. And then lastly, to wrap everything up, we've got the Willet Topper segment. This is where I demonstrate polishes over a black swatch stick to show whether or not they're able to be worn as a topper. Okay, so we've got lots and lots to check out for this segment this month. And the Baroness X, it looks like a topper. Interestingly enough, the purple just kind of goes away and it gives you a, an idea of how much shimmer is in it. Bow Reb looks amazing and it kind of took on its own polished look in my opinion. We see more of that blue dominant shift to it if you choose to layer it up. Cameo popped well. You can see all that shimmer goodness here. I was pleasantly surprised with this because the formula was so crelly like Chameleon. I feel like this is dehorning a unicorn. I don't think we're going to see any of the thermal shifts with this. So I would recommend not layering this one. It's just too cream like. DRK pops well. And of course, like I feel like DRK's magnetics are always very versatile in that how you can wear them. I do think that that heavier formula, it needed to be magnetized a touch more, but customer bottles won't have that issue. Hearts and Promises looks stunning. I think it just amped up that nice smoky effect from the base. This one is so pretty in person. I'm just, I, I really liked it and it layers well. Jen and Berries, I didn't think it was going to do it, but it totally toppered. And you can see all that sparkly holographic goodness. KB Shimmer in all of its loud glory looks beautiful over black. So I think this is going to be really versatile and you could probably wear it over any cream color, to be honest. Luna looks awesome. And this is kind of like the hearts and promises where it just kind of smoked out that base even more. And we get more of a scattering from the glitters. So a strong twinkly effect. Monarchs is gorgeous. It sparkles so much. And I think this gives you a better idea of that sparkly look in person. It's just, I just don't think the camera does it justice. MTK is kind of similar in how it just... It's, it's just so packed full of shimmer and you can see the tiny little flecks of uh, iridescent flakes going there too when you layer it. Night Owl, uh, Bigfoot does topper. Interestingly enough, because this to me was going to be a little too opaque, but it definitely worked. And I think you can see more of the multi-chrome flakes. Polish, we're not surprised. Polish just kicks some severe ass when it comes to the shimmers. And this one is no exception. We get that lush green to blue appearance. Pampered polishes. I dare say we're dehorning a unicorn here. It's too crelly, too cream like to layer unless you're going to do it over white, which I'm not quite sure why you would do that. But you can get an idea of the hollow flex there. Psych Minerals looks stunning over black too. Just for those of you who are new to indie polishes, using a black base underneath multichromes is an old school technique to make multichromes pop more, which is why this looks so good. Rogue Lacquer, I thought it was going to be too opaque, but it's not. And it glows with that purpley pinkish sort of shimmery effect. It's really, really pretty. 
sassy sauce. So the ghostly magnetic sassy sauce and vapid, both of them looked really, really good. So I think there's a lot of versatility. Sassy, you can see all that pretty reddish shimmer in the backdrop there. And then vapid too, both sassy and vapid. I'm telling y'all this, the, both of those are going to layer so well over other colors. In addition to black, the vapid shows you guys how much shimmer you're working with and it shows the contrast there. So you can see that that movement I was talking about. And then wildflower toppered very well too. This kind of, it, it just took on more of an emerald jewel toned vampire type of green. So again, I think this is going to be fantastic for the holidays, uh, especially those of you who like to do nail art and stuff. And then finally, Zombie Claw. I thought Zombie Claw was going to be, again, too heavy, too crelly of a formula to do this, but it toppered well. So uh, just remember, this also glows in the dark. So if you wore it over a base color, you'll have nice glowy goodness there, too. All right. So that is it for what I have to show you guys. To round out the video, um, we're going to discuss the... Um, IPU non-polish items that I have for you all. I only have um, one so far with me in person, but I did want to mention that KB Shimmer is bringing back their uh, peppermint scented body sugar scrub, and it's awesome. Um, I bought mine last year. I told you guys on my body stuff, like my scrubs, my lotions, my body butters, I am a just, I just go nuts over that stuff and I have so much, but my peppermint this time of year, I'm telling you, um, I go bananas for it. You know, it's, it's it bath and body works. And then if I see something, especially indie stuff, I'm all over it. So if you're like me and you appreciate a good, delicious, somewhat sweet sort of peppermint, definitely recommend grabbing KB shimmers. It's wonderful and if you're like me and you like to use it after you shave and stuff it'll give this nice cool type of menthol almost like tingle because of the peppermint it's fantastic i didn't want to show you guys my empty because it's been in my shower and i just that kind of icks me out i don't want to see a used very used heavily used jar at all so i'm not going to show that to you guys but just take my word for it so the next thing i have that's um actually uh in person is Vapid's Nail Elixir. This month we have the scent Mischievous Fae Folk and I purposely did not open it until right now so that I can blind sniff it. I've had quite a few of you tell me that you like the blind sniffing. You can hear, put it next to the microphone, you can hear the um, opening of the, the, the thing here. Uh, no ASMR, I don't know. That's not my thing. I, I, I personally don't like it. I don't know if it's, I'm just in the complete minority here, but that's not my jam. So I'm gonna put a little bit on me right here so we can smell it actually on my skin. And then I will describe it and then we're gonna see if I was correct or what am I actually smelling. I can already smell it. Like my hand is, is down here and I can already smell it. Um, I feel like I'm gonna have really bad posture when I go to edit because of the way I'm sitting and I'm sorry about that. All right, so we're all rubbed in here and oh, that's nice. It's it's a bakery vanilla. Oh, that looks so nice on my skin. I love this stuff so, so much. I love nail elixir. Um, it's vanilla. I'm getting vanilla. It's just vanilla, but bakery vanilla. Yeah. Bakery vanilla for sure. So the official description, let me get it here. Uh, it's a sweet sugar cookie scent, heavy on the cookie and sugary frosted fantasies. That's what it smells like. If you could um, like, a, like a Yankee candle, if you've smelled the sugar cookie scent to those, it's like that. It's definitely like that. It's, it's so warm and yummy smelling, very pleasant. Not so overpowering, but Definitely, if you're like, you know, holding your hand out or whatever, you can you can smell it from from this way. It's so pleasant. So anyways, we will have that this month and there is a cap of 300 bottles for these and that's going to be 12 for the nail elixir. And just to remind you guys, this is the size. So I, I do. I fancy myself as having like monster hands. They're huge, but <laughs> you can see for a reference on that. So anyways, that's it. And uh, I guess to round everything out, we're going to 
uh, if you're still hanging out with me, let's um, let's talk about what's on uh, my radar, things that I've noticed. Um, I'm hoping I'm going to get this out before the site goes up for wishlisting so we can kind of go over together the maker's spoiler thread in the Facebook group. So uh, let me pull it up here and I'll just have as I've been doing, I think that's been working really well. Um, the, the polishes that are popping up on the maker's Facebook thread. So let me get comfortable here. Um, let's see. The first one that's on, at least for me, I wonder, is it the same order just despite devices or anything? I don't know. I think it is. But anyways, uh, BCV is the first one that pops up and it definitely is one that has caught my eye. That's very very pretty and it looks really interesting. I definitely get some um, mermaid vibes and I'm really digging the shimmer going on there. Uh, Swamp glosses is um, that's going to be coming home with me. That one's beautiful. It, it looks very different and different lighting. Um, I definitely want to see some more swatches of it, but um, just from the, the little stick there, I'm intrigued. It looks like it's going to be very glowy. Oh, there's the KB Shimmer uh, Sugar Scrub. Yeah, peppermint. Um, I will be getting another one of those. I I'm telling you guys, I'm obsessed with peppermint scents. And that one was such a delight to use. I tend to just kind of squirrel it away and use my favorite smells for when um, I either have like a hot date night or just if I'm just feeling extra special. I want to do something nice for myself. I'll use my favorite scents. And that's definitely up there. Uh, Van Vanessa Molina's. Uh, polish looks really pretty. The uh, contrast between the flakes and the base definitely has caught my eye. I think it's really pretty and I think there might be some other ways to wear that too. I think that would look like it looks the bomb over purples. I don't know. We'll see. Cuticula's looks nice. She's really knocking it out this year um, for PPU. I'm, I'm really liking her stuff. Um, Cadillacers looks pretty. I'm very excited for this one. It looks like a multi chrome on a multi chrome, which I'm here for. Like the magnetic shimmer or particles look like those are going to be really multi chromey. And then the base looks like it's a super multi chrome too. So I'm, I'm digging that. Ethereal, I would 100% be getting that one. That looks so good. Every single swatch I've seen of it, it looks so shimmer packed and we all know how well Megan does shimmers. Emily Damali's, I really like this one. Um, she's got on the description here that um, it's a bright purple base, purple jelly base, um, but I do know her formulas and her formulas are very rich and delicious. So polished for days, polished for days. Yes, I love this one. And this one is a 100% guarantee gonna come home with me. I love the way this one looks. Watches. Um, there is another nail polish group that they were chatting about their wish lists and stuff. And I was like, can we talk about the Watcha though? <laughs> it's so pretty. Um, I, I really like reflective glitter polishes because they're just so ridiculously sparkly and I love it. I love it, love it, love it. And this green looks like it's just going to pop so well. Green with a pink shimmer is so delightful in polish form. Lumens, I'm really on the fence with. I, I love it. At first glance, I really like it. Uh, it's definitely caught my eye. I want to see probably maybe some swatch videos of it, to be honest. Um, it looks like it's going to be an earthy multi-chrome, which is what I'm, I'm hoping. Uh, I, I think I'm seeing here and it looks very shifty, but it's definitely caught my eye. By Danny Viana. She does thermals so good and this one's really nice. Um, it looks like the warm state and the cool state both have that glowy blue shimmer which I am not going to be tired of for forever. It's it's such a lovely shimmer and I'm, I'm seeing it everywhere and I'm OK with that because I really like it. Um, noodles, noodles polish, noodles nail polish. I think that's how you say it. Um, this one looks really pretty and it's such a glitter bomb and I'm really digging it. It looks like it's going to be a really nice foundation for nail art. Glisten and Glows is wonderful. I think I want to see some more swatches of it. And uh, I know her formulas are really, really good. So not too worried about that. I just want to see some more lighting situations. I do appreciate straight, just plain finishes. And this one, at least from what I'm seeing here, looks like there's nothing else going on with it, that it's just a multi-chrome, which I'm okay with that. I love that. Phoenix. I so love Phoenix's polish this month. I don't typically go towards or gravitate towards like really dusky sort of finishes, but the shimmer looks so just strong in it. And I really like it. 
I was going to say gin and berries, but like I swatched that. So I guess that means I really liked it. Um, such a beautiful color. Paint It Pretty is killing it this year too. She's just always like, I really, really enjoy seeing what she's got coming. And this one looks really pretty. And it looks like it's going to be a super strong contrast between the flakes and the base. And I am down for that. Ard as Nails. Um, I'll admit I've, I've never tried their polish before and I'm really curious. And this one might be uh, the entry into the dark side for me because uh, I'm really liking it. I want to see some more swatches, but it looks incredibly, incredibly shifty and beautiful on the, um, the little teaser here. Hit the Bottles plate is so stinking cute. I'm definitely going to be grabbing it. I really enjoy their plates. Um, I did, I think it was the hit the bottle plate for the, um, last month that I got. I totally planned on doing a Halloween video for you guys. And I was going to do a bunch of nail art and stuff, but, um, the editing process to this week is taking me a little bit longer than I anticipated. And unfortunately Halloween is Tuesday. So I don't know if I'll get out something in time for that, but anyways, so yeah, I do like their play. So I'm hoping I can grab that and maybe I'll actually have a, a holiday nail art video, um, for you guys. Zara's earrings. I'm, I'm like, I swear I might as well just like have that automatically on my list every single month. Um, I got my witch hat earrings from September or was it last month? They're all blurring this time of year. I'm telling you, we hit September and then it's my oldest birthday and then everything just kind of blends into holiday land. Um, but anyways, I got the witch hats the other week and they were so cute. I love them to pieces. Rain dance lacquer. I like, I really, really like this. I have to blow it up here on my phone. Um, it's super pretty and it looks like it's going to be very, very glowy with that. Um, yeah, it's a mag magnetic. It looks very, very pretty. Very much liking that. I want to see some more swatches. Dom's is just glittery, shimmery goodness. And I saw... Um, I know the one, the picture I have up here behind me is, uh, it's her bottle shots, but I saw Lisa's swatch of it and I was like, yes, ma'am. So yeah, I will be getting Dom's hundred percent. Pinnacle polish. I really like this one. I don't typically go for super dark polishes and the ones that I do tend to go for, they're just different. And there's some type of different thing going on with it. And from the swatches I'm seeing here, the formula looks like it's going to be really opaque and creamy, which I'm down for, especially for something that looks so holographic like this one. Uh, sizzling Shades Nail Lacquer. That is, I'm going to say that wrong every single time. Sizzling Shades Nail Lacquer. Uh, that one's pretty. I want to see more of it. It looks stunning. It looks like it's a, it's a cool toned um, red against that swatcher, which they are rocking it looks beautiful. I think that might be a guaranteed purchase from me. Um, there is new to me brand, uh, probably new to PPU too. I think, um, Bedford and Grove. I really like this one. It's so glowy and it looks very flattering. So I definitely want to see some more swatches of that one. And then garden paths. I want to see some more swatches of this one. Um, I'm super on the fence about it. Again, I'm very picky on dark polishes, but this one looks like it has a really strong shimmer factor and it's Garden Path. Like Garden Path always has these beautiful, intense shimmers and, and sparkles and all that stuff. So I, I know it's going to be even more beautiful in person. And um, it's, it's also after her inspiration here is after the, um, the part of the last unicorn where the character Molly is like, where have you been? And like that scene is so personal for me. And I just, yeah. So inspiration sometimes will really get me to buy a polish too. Not that it's not beautiful. I mean, I'm hundred percent eyeball on it, but yeah, that, that very special, very, very special. Ember nail lacquer. I'm interested in this one. I want to see probably some video swatches of it just to see how it applies, but it looks like it's going to be really versatile. Like it'll probably look really cool over lighter colors. I just want to see some more of it, but this one's definitely caught my eye and all mixed up lacquers look something else. This is gorgeous. And I need to see more swatches of it because based off of what I'm seeing on the maker's thread right now, it looks, I mean, I'm, it looks like it's shimmer. I, I could be wrong, but I'm seeing shimmer. I'm, I'm definitely, I think it's shimmer. I need to see more of it, but yeah, this one is probably on like the 80 percentile for coming home with me. 
Oh, I see Man Made by JNS. I love their stuff so much. Um, they look like they're they're using that uh, die mad you salty person uh, in their uh, uh, doing a salty pouch. I got the wallet. Was it last year? I think it was last year. And um, I got the wallet. I have used it all over the place and including really inappropriate places that I just don't think about it. And then I bust my wallet out. And then, yeah, my favorite um, interaction with that wallet, with that fabric was um, I took my oldest to an Astros game and uh, he's really into baseball and he is in little league. So anyways, um, we went and I was a little bit of a salty bee because the merch store is so expensive and uh, I promised him a shirt. So we went to go get the shirt and I, I busted out my wallet and I was paying for it. And um, the, the cashier was like, what is that? And she just like grabbed all these other cashiers around her. And like, they all like were just oogling over my wallet. And I'm sure I was pissing off some people because, you know, everyone's paying attention um, not to ring out these other people. But uh, it, it just it was hilarious. And we all laughed about it. And I was like, isn't it appropriate for how much money we're spending in here? But Anyways, yeah, so um, that's exciting that there's going to be a pouch. So let me know in the comment section what's on your wish list, what has your eye, um, all that good stuff to be entered into my giveaway. This month is so dangerous. I'm so excited. And my my other favorite month, too, outside of the foodie ones and the fantasy ones is Maker's Choice. I do have a couple of those already. So this last little bit of the year is going to be very, very expensive. I'm super excited. It's awesome. It's great. <laughs> We're all on fire and it's okay. I will link you guys to the Facebook group for Polish Pickup if you haven't joined there. In addition to the Facebook PPU BST group that my BFF Lisa of Cosmetic Sanctuary and I admin together if you haven't joined that either. It's a chat group and we're all talking nail polish and stuff in there. And I'll also link you guys to Polish Pickup's website, uh, right now it's the basics, so long as I get this out before wishlisting. But wishlisting usually goes up the Sunday before the shop opens. So all good stuff there. And of course, I'll have timestamps, all that good stuff in the description box. So if you need to, to have anything um, just written in a written format, it's there for you. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.